Praise the Lord, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited for this opportunity, friends, to be with you and to bring to you the living Word of God. I tell you, the Lord has given me a specific Word that is tailored fit just for you. We know that it only takes one Word from God. Uh, I think one of our friends in the ministry says, one word from God will change your life forever. Before we go to the word today, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you now for this another opportunity to minister to these, your sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge will flow unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic, or demonic force. Lord, I ask that you will come now by your Holy Spirit and speak through my vocal cord. Think through my mind, none of me, all of you, less of me, and more of you. Father, I believe I've prepared myself. So as I talk, you teach. As I share, you speak. Speak in and speak through, speak with. You even have permission to speak against my own word but may your people not leave this place, this sacred moment with you, without a divine word from you. Hide me now behind the cross that Christ and Christ alone is exalted. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. But we ask now that you would keep your glory for yourself. In fact, may it be displayed on us May it be manifested through us that we might draw others to you. Thank you now. Bless our time together, and we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and praise God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I am so excited about this opportunity to be with you today. I tell you, there is a word from the Lord. There is a word for you, for me, for those who are listening and watching from the Lord, specifically tailored fit and prepared to meet your, you at the place and at the point of your need. I want to talk today about God's big idea. God's big idea. And uh, one of the things that I believe is central to God, and that is faithfulness. God desires faithfulness, friends, from us. Well, you know, what does it mean to be faithful? The word faithful, I'm, I want to deal right now just with the adjective part of it, is it means, number one, to be uh, thorough in performance or duty. Uh, uh, a, a faithful worker. Number two, one that's true to their word, promises, vows, etc. Someone that is steady in allegiance or affection, loyal and constant, uh, someone like a faithful friend. Uh, number four, uh, faithful means to be reliable and trusted, to be believed. One that's adhering to truth or to adhering or true to fact. Number five, a standard and original. Uh, faithfulness is what is accurate. Uh, one that gives a faithful account, a faithful copy. Uh, it really means to be full of faith, believing. Those are some of the definitions of the word faithfulness. Uh, on the synonym part of faithfulness, it means to be devoted or staunch, constant, and it implies qualities of stability, dependability, devotion. Faithful implies long continued and steadfast fidelity to whatever one is bound to by a pledge, by a duty, an obligation. Faithful means, uh, it, 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 it means to be constant. It suggests firmness and steadfastness in atta an attachment. 
uh, allegiance to a person, to an organization, to a cause, or an idea. One that's loyal to their associates. One uh, that's loyal to their country. Something that's precise or exact. I know that's a lot of definition that I just gave. But all of those adjectives and synonyms deal with faithfulness and what it means to be faithful. Uh, I want to, in, as we go and explore faithfulness, I want us to look at the nature of God. The nature of God. What we have to discover, or what we will discover, is that God is faithful. God is faithful. I say God is faithful. In fact, God is faithful to his word. He's so faithful to his word, he put his word above his name, and his name is holy. Number three, God is faithful to us. God is faithful to us. Yes, I'm talking to you. God is faithful to you, and he will continue to be faithful to you. Number four, God requires faithfulness from us. God requires it. Faithfulness. God keeps a record of faithfulness. God keeps a record of faithfulness. He does not forget your labor of love. He does not forget your faithfulness to his work. He does not forget your faithfulness to his divine assignment for your life. And God, number, five, uh, number six, rewards faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. In fact, Scripture says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, pursue him, chase after him. This has to do with the nature of God. Let's look at our text today coming from Matthew chapter 25, verses 19 to 30. Matthew 25, verses 19 through 30. Hopefully we'll get through it. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Now, let me just give you a little background information on what that's talking about, the Lord of the servant. Here we have a parable where Jesus is given instructions on uh, faithfulness. He uses a parable which is pretty much a earthly story in its most simplistic term with a heavenly meaning. That's what we call parables, you know. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So here we have in verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh. Now let me explain to you what the word Lord means. The word Lord means owner. The word Lord means owner. Not necessarily master. Well, it, in a sense, it means master, but it's deeper than master. It means owner, that word Lord. So think with me. When you see someone owns a property, he owns land, you're, and, and you're renting the property, we call him what? The landlord. Why? He owns the land. He's the Lord. He's the owner, or in that sense, he's the master of that land. So the same thing in Scripture, verse 19. It said, the Lord of those servants. And in that, in that context, he was their Lord, their owner, and their master. Come it and reckon it with them. And verse 20 says, and so he that had received the five talents, here the Lord had given them some money to, to invest. And so he says, he that had the five talents came and brought other five, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five. Behold, I gained beside them five more. So here we see the Lord and the servant. Thus the Lord gave him five talents. The servant came and returned back to the Lord the five talents or money in this context that he had given him. That's key. He returned back to him exactly what he gave him plus 
five more. Somebody said double portion. He gave back to his Lord double what his Lord had given to him. Verse 21 said, his Lord said unto him, well done. Well done. Thou what? Good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. In other words, I gave you a little bit of this and you came and brought me back that. You've been faithful. Now, because of your faithfulness, I'm going to make you a ruler. I'm going to make thee ruler over many things. I'm going to increase your capacity to produce. Because you have shown me that what I have put on your shoulders, what I have entrusted into your care, what I have entrusted into your hand, you now can produce it. You can reproduce. You can reproduce. And watch this. So I am going to now make you a ruler. You go from that day, from going, becoming a, being a servant, to being a ruler. My God in heaven, I feel the anointing in this place. Instantly, because of your faithfulness, you go from being a servant to a ruler. Somebody just missed that. Let me say that again. Because of your faithfulness, I'm speaking to someone right now. Because of your faithfulness, I'm talking to someone who felt like giving up. You're saying, well, what's the use? I, nobody's recognizing me. I, I, I've been at this thing for a while, and I've done this, and I'm being passed over. I'm telling you that that season of your life has changed. You're getting ready to walk into a season of promotion because of your faithfulness. God is saying to you, well done. Well done. Thou good, thou faithful servant. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Listen, I got, I got to slow it down uh, because if I don't, I'm going I'm to pass right through this and, and miss my point. Listen, it says, he that, oh, glory, I feel the anointing in this place. Catch this. He says, I will make thee ruler over, watch this, many things, then it's a enter into the joy of the Lord. Well, let me tell you something. You can't be joyful and happy when you've been unfaithful. In fact, that's when you get envious and jealous because someone is producing and you're not. I come against the spirit of competitiveness that's unholy. That the, your life will now produce the, your life of unfaithfulness and, un, and barrenness ends today. That God now steps you into a season of promotion because of your faithfulness to him. Hallelujah. He says, verse 22, He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I've gained to others beside them. Oh, you know, the, in Scripture, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible began to talk about there being seed in every tree there was seed. Seed. Seed, I'm saying it for a reason, I'm repeat, repeating it. Well, he's repetitive today. Well, I'm saying, and in the seed was the tree. And in the tree, watch this, every tree that produced, watch this, every tree that produced, he began to increase his capacity to produce more. But where was the tree? In the seed. And where was the fruit? In the tree. So here you had seed, tree, then fruit. Oh, God in heaven. Listen, that's not in my notes. That just came in my spirit. So now you have every tree producing seed that produced fruit after its kind. Glory, hallelujah. 
What am I saying today? You have the capacity to produce. You have the capacity to bring forth fruit, not just in your life, but to be an example for those that are following you. Listen, my friend, there are people that are watching you, and you don't even know that as you produce, you will become encouragement to them. There are members of your family that are looking to you. There are members of your, 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 your peers, your friends, your schoolmates, others in other arenas in the professional field that are looking to you as an example. And God is saying, I'm ready for you to produce fruit. Glory. You will not be barren. You will not be barren, but you will produce the harvest, the fruit, the harvest, the fruit that's inside the tree, that's inside the seed that God has deposited on the inside of you. Somebody say amen. Glory. Verse 23 says, his Lord said unto him, now he's talking about the one that came with the two talent, and then he produced two more. He said, well done. 